Uh, welcome to this conference on the Kent Environment Strategy. And with COP25 going on, just a short private jet flight up the road, the environment is very much in the air. And of course, the air is very much in the environment. And that's what much of all this is about. This conference is being aligned with what's going on in Glasgow. But if they were to take a glance down here, then they might see that we are showing something of a lead in Kent. Kent County Council is rightly proud, in my view, of the way it has ridden the winds of change and reduced its emissions steadily for years now, as you'll hear. And KCC is proud to aim at net zero for its own estate by 2030 and for the whole county by 2050. Before we go on, though, I have to bring you some negative news. In common with uh, COP26, uh, the presidents of China and Russia will not be coming to this conference. But hey, we've got much better people than that here today. People with real commitment to the environment uh, and who are actually doing something about it. And the first of them is the man who leads Kent County Council, the evergreen Roger Goff. Thank, thank you, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, to this event, uh, the fifth Kent Environment Strategy Conference since the strategy was launched uh, back in 2016. Um, and uh, it's, it's good to see, I can, looking around the room, I can see a number of people who are, have made and continue to make a distinguished contribution to uh, the work Hello, that we're all doing in Kent, uh, whether county, districts, uh, Medway Unitary Authority, all those involved in, in, outside the world of local government, but who are deeply involved in this area. And uh, I do know that Caroline Jessel uh, is here, who I know is, we are shortly to have the difficult task of trying to find a replacement for at the Kent Nature Partnership. So uh, Caroline, very good to have you uh, here as well. Now, of course, this year, the uh, conference coincides with, as Sean mentioned, the uh, uh, UN 26, sorry, the 26th UN Conference of the Parties in Glasgow, better known as COP26. Um, and uh, that for, that, that's not the only development. So some 10 days or so ago, we saw the uh, net zero strategy from government uh, as well. So there is a huge amount that is going on, both in terms of uh, local initiative, which is what we'll be talking about today, national policy, uh, and international uh, policy and diplomacy, which continues uh, as we speak. Um, and clearly, in the case of um, our own local delivery, uh, we have a lot to reflect on and a lot to uh, uh, both be pleased about where we've got to uh, and look to the next stages. And it comes at a particular time because we are just now returning to something a little bit closer to normality uh, after the pandemic impacted every aspect uh, of our lives. Now, we do have the opportunity to capitalise on the beneficial changes uh, that this initiated, including the switch to more flexible working, our increased appreciation for green space and our digital uh, shopping habits. Uh, but it is, of course, worth saying, too, that we're at the point where all of these things get a little bit tested because we are now at the point where we start to make a partial return uh, to normal. How much of what's been gained uh, do we hold on to, as well as uh, seeking to make up uh, what has been lost? And I think that will be an important test for all the uh, partners involved in these initiatives as to how we make the most uh, of what we've learned from the pandemic and apply it in what we hope will now be a very different world. Uh, economic uh, recovery also provides us with an opportunity to support innovation uh, and retraining to expand the low carbon goods and services sector, which already uh, supports over 63,000 uh, jobs in Kent and Medway. Uh, one of the major announcements, again, uh, we've seen is the decision by the government to end the sale of petrol and diesel vehicles from 2030, and that provides an enormous stimulus uh, for change. Now, one of the things we hear about today is the great strides that we are making uh, towards decarbonising our transport and providing the charging infrastructure that's needed uh, to support that. And in that context, uh, in terms of decarbonising uh, transport, it was great to see amongst the Chancellor's announcements last week, uh, nine and a half million pounds uh, from the Department for Transport Zebra Fund 
uh, for the electrification of fast track uh, buses, both in the Thames, in the Thames Estuary or Thames Gateway uh, and also in Dover. Uh, and that I think is a hugely positive uh, announcement. Um, this afternoon, you'll hear a variety of speakers um, and we will hear very much a national perspective as well as a local one on the political significance of COP26. Uh, and not only the drive towards net zero, but also the scale of adaptation required uh, to make both the county and the country uh, more resilient to the impacts of climate change. And I think it's something that many of us always sought to emphasize that we absolutely have to do what we uh, can do at a local level. Um, we know at the same time that we are but part of much, a much larger global uh, phenomenon in terms of trying to uh, make that drive towards net zero. Uh, and that in, in any case, much of the uh, uh, climate change is to a fair extent baked in anyway. It is coming. And the question is, how do we as a community, as a county, adapt to that and ensure that we have the resilience to uh, make the very most of some of the opportunities that arise from changes in temperature, but equally, and perhaps at least as importantly, uh, prepare ourselves for dealing with the negative impacts that there will be and the pressures that puts on us. Um, so this afternoon, what we will do at the same time is recognize that our local progress, progress is connected and feeds into the global aims of COP26. And we'll be discussing those themes. So it's gonna be adaptation, resilience, finance, nature, energy transition and clean transport. And you will hear about some of the exciting and innovative projects across Kent that align with these themes to support our net zero goal. Now this time last year, we launched the Kent and Medway Energy and Low Emissions Strategy, which sets out how we will and are already uh, lowering greenhouse gas emissions uh, to reach net zero by 2050 at the latest. And as Sean mentioned, that is very much a target for Kent and Medway as an area. Uh, there is within many of us as organizations, um, county council, Medway unitary districts, all have our own internal uh, targets to more, re uh, uh, more rapidly reach uh, net zero from our own estate and operations. And we are very much driving towards that in the case of Kent County Council with already a, and I always forget this, Susan, 73% reduction uh, in our carbon emissions from our estate and operations at KCC. Uh, and that is something that we are very much continuing to drive forward. Um, I'm pleased to say, incidentally, and I know we have many members of the terrific team within KCC who work in this area, that uh, we are getting some uh, recognition of that uh, in the sense that tomorrow evening, um, sorry, Thursday evening, uh, we have the uh, Local Government Chronicle, the LGC um, Awards uh, and Climate Response. Uh, we, Kent County Council, are one of the finalists uh, for that. So uh, uh, I think that reflects some of the tremendous work that's gone on. Uh, and I know not only within the County Council, but across our partners as well. Uh, and we've, so I say we have much to be pro, uh, pleased with in terms of our progress. But I think we do recognize that the challenges are, are still very much there. The targets uh, raise big questions for all of us and above all to actually achieve uh, collaborative uh, action uh, and, and a recognition that this will touch every area of our lives. Uh, the way we conduct business, how we travel and heat our homes, uh, and even our shopping habits. So I hope that this afternoon we managed to uh, uh, come out of this both uh, uh, very much given the confidence and the pride in what we have achieved already, and that gives us confidence for the future, but also to recognize the steps that we need to take and will take to ensure that we deliver those, both those interim net zero targets uh, for many of us as organizations, and then for all of us as a county uh, to deliver that for 2050. So I hope we have a very good afternoon uh, and look forward to hearing the other speakers. Sean, back to you. Thank you, uh, Roger.